Like there will be no executions in Ohio for a while. A federal judge has placed a moratorium on Ohio executions, at least until mid-August. The reason, legal questions about Ohio's new method of lethal injection. Ohio's increased the dosage of those new drugs after the last execution took much longer than previous ones, and the inmates seemed to struggle. Jeanetta King, why, I mean, how are we, what are we going to know in three months that we don't know now about Ohio's yeah. execution method? This is an issue that Ohio and, quite frankly, other states have been tra um, struggling with over the last couple of years because in 2009, um, there was a lack of um, the, the types of, essentially, um, medications that we use uh, as part of the cocktail to administer the, um, the death penalty. And so we've been struggling since 2009 to come up with some kind of cocktail that would have um, uh, basically the, the same effect as the, the previous one. Um, and what essentially has happened now is the, um, the, the solution where we use uh, two. Um, it's not quite working like we need it to work, and unfortunately we're having some very serious situations as we're administering the death penalty. In terms of what we're going to know over the next three years, I'm, or next three months, I'm really not sure how you test this. I mean, I do think it's smart, though, to step back and, and review, look at some of what's going on to see um, are we doing the best that we can because we really can't afford to be having these missteps. Gene, is the death penalty a permanent hold? Any chance that could happen? I don't think so. You look at the polling, what is it, 70% of Ohioans like the death penalty. And it is unfortunately, you run into certain situations. So if you have somebody in prison under a lifetime sentence and they kill a prison guard, what are you going to do? What sort of threat can you possibly have to hang over them? Out, like two lifetimes? No. You need to have a death penalty for certain highly limited cases. So, well, we will see. Let's get to our next topic. They have been controversial since they went up. They are really controversial if one takes a picture of your car. Red light cameras have provided a good source of income to cities that have installed them. Supporters say they are stopping red light runners, preventing crashes, and saving lives. Lawmakers are considering two red light camera bills. One would basically ban them by requiring cities to have a police officer at each camera, which they can't do. The other would set statewide standards for the cameras. Jim Siegel, are, are red light cameras really in jeopardy of disappearing? Well, the bill that, that would require the police officer at each, at each uh, intersection where there's a camera had a hearing, and there were several opponents to testify. Not a single proponent uh, supporter came in to testify, and I can tell you very much so that, yes, they are in danger of being eliminated because there are a lot of legislators who've been getting a lot of angry phone calls from constituents regarding these cameras. And there, there is another, there is another, I mean, the House already passed a ban. Uh, they, they passed the bill already. Now there's concerns that it goes against some constitutional, uh, run, runs into the home rule issue. Uh, another one that's yeah. always fun to bring up every now and then is, but, uh, but yeah, there, there are definitely a number of legislators who, who believe that the, these things need to go. And despite the arguments from some who say, look, it, it, there are, there are definitely stats that show that they have a, seem to have a benefit on a, from a safety perspective. They reduce crashes at these intersections. However, it's just a, you know, some of these, I even asked some, someone who, do, who does not support that, that bill. I asked a legislator today, he said, some of these guys have just overreached. Some of these cities have gone too far, have, or do not have good processes in place, and have really kind of spoiled it for, for Columbus and some others who maybe do it better. And you have a problem also of physics. A former colleague of mine did the math. He got, he got picked up here in Columbus, and he did the math on it with a car weighing X amount of tons, okay, at 34 miles an hour, light comes yellow, how many seconds does he have to go through, and he could, you cannot create brakes fast that will stop a car quickly enough. And so you have a problem here with the veracity of these things in some situations. Can we, can we use that when we get stopped? <laughs> if you can do the math, or you could know somebody who teaches physics at a small Midwestern college, <laughs> you could go ahead and uh, have it done. Yes. License, registration, and, and calculator, please. Right. So you can mm -hmm. figure out if you should have stopped. Yeah. Well, I'm a geek. What do you expect? <laughs> um, th basically, it comes down to the fact that these cameras don't catch a person. They are a civil violation versus mm -hmm. a criminal violation. If you don't have a camera, you run the red light. Mm -hmm. So that's, it, it, that's one of the arguments, is that you're ticketing the car, not the person driving the car. Yeah, that's right. Um, you know, having a police officer sit there is, um, what they're requiring, again, is just a police officer, what they would require is a police officer just to sit there. 
the, that officer doesn't have to pull someone over. So it would still allow them to use the camera in some of the ways they've been using it now, which is just to record who broke it, have somebody look at it and issue the tickets. Um, so, uh, you know, the, um, if, if, like, we have a small community who, that kind of made these famous in Cincinnati, Elmwood Place, um, made, um, I think, $1.7 million, uh, more than their entire yearly budget in six months using these cameras. Um, people drive through Elmwood Place, but they don't live there. Generally, it has only 2,000 people. It's like so. a new realm of Cincinnati. Yeah, when, I, yeah, when I speak of the lawmakers who point to the bad actors, that's Elmwood Place is who yeah. they point and, to. Because there's a speed camera out there too, right? Isn't uh, yeah. It is only speed cameras. It's we don't have... And they really don't like speed cameras. They, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so um, you know, that... Uh, that community told me, well, we'll keep using them. We don't really have enough officers, but we're going to sit people at that intersection if that's what it takes. So, And, and to the extent that, um, you know, critics say, well, this is just for the localities to get money, you know, that's one thing. But the, the preventing um, the accidents and the safety, and I was very surprised by the fact that there was 73%, you know, less um, red light accidents. Mm -hmm. So they are having an, an impact from the safety perspective that yeah. I think has to at least be acknowledged that it might not just be a moneymaker. Yeah, in Columbus, they do a test because they always they put a camera up and they, there's no tickets for a month. And in that, in, that, in that one month, the number of T-bone crashes just drops dramatically. So they, so they have an effect. So maybe it's like fake owls in your garden. You just put them up and <laughs> you don't have to really send a ticket to anybody. I think that, would, that word would get out too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. I can do it with the fake owls don't work either. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs>